uh, we're aiming for that, that the examination will be made uh, completely remote uh, at the people's homes, for example. Uh, and uh, the doctor can also in their homes uh, review those examinations and write a report uh, and send it back to the patient. Our solution so um, with the automatic lesion detection solves this problem also and can just highlight the most important parts in the examination uh, to those people that uh, will work with, the, uh, with that data. My name is Agata Wandowska and here we are in Startup Stories where we talk about startups and what made them work. Today, my special guest is Jakub Niemczuk, co-founder of Biocam Startup, which create a completely safe and non-invasive endoscopy capsule-based system for gastrointernal observation and diagnosis of abnormalities. Hello, Jakub. How are you today? Hello, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Uh, thank you for being here and for taking part in our podcast. It's an uh, honor for us. And I think that we can start with the first question. Uh, what is What does Biocam Startup do? Okay, so uh, like you introduced us, uh, we are a company that develops endoscopic capsule devices, but not only devices, but also accessories and systems. Right now we are working on a, a very advanced um, compared to other competitor systems, very advanced uh, complete systems for a uh, system for remote examinations uh, using capsule endoscopy. Uh, the system consists, consists basically uh, of a physical device that the, the whole capsule uh, that is swallowed by the patient. It um, images the small and large intestines of the patient and the data is transmitted wirelessly to a receiver or a mobile device and is sent to a telemedical platform that automatically detects lesions and other um, uh, other abnormalities that then uh, they are uh, reviewed by the medical uh, team basically a, a doctor uh, that has a enormous advantage compared to other companies uh, because <clears throat> right now the state of the capsule endoscopy is so that uh, you, if you have a need to uh, use capsule endoscopy, the, you will be placed in a hospital and spend there eight to 12 hours. That's the whole time that the capsule is inside your body. Of course, after the 12 hours, the capsule leaves your body. Uh, and uh, then the, um, uh, the doctor has to review the whole footage from, the from those 12 hours. So you can imagine that it's very tiresome uh, for those people uh, and it's very boring. So if a doctor has to review, uh, for example, four to six patients uh, in a row, uh, they can easily be um, distracted by something else, be bored and skip uh, some important uh, parts from the movie. And so uh, Basically, our solution um, with the automatic lesion detection solves this problem also and can just highlight the most important parts in the examination uh, to those people that uh, will work with, the, uh, with that data. And of course, um, there is no need to see the patients by the, the medical team. The um, examination could be made, uh, we're aiming for that, that the examination will be made completely remote uh, at the people's homes, for example, uh, and uh, the doctor can also in their homes uh, review those examinations and write a report uh, and send it back to the patient. So basically okay. that's the whole idea on our startup. Okay, so that's pretty amazing because I heard many people that said that the endoscopy is not a pleasant examination, but it's really yes. efficient yes. because it helps detect many uh, disease. So your solution can like help people who have some fear because of that examination just to uh, treat themselves, just to take care of their health. So what are the diseases that can be recognized thanks to your device? Yes, uh, basically, our device can recognize every disease in the human gastric path that is visible to, to the camera. 
Um, right now, if you have some problems with your gastric systems <clears throat> system, you basically uh, visit the doctor and can take, like you said, a classic endoscopy, swallowing a fibroscope, or it goes the other <laughs> way around. That's yeah. very unpleasant, and many people don't uh, decide to to do that uh, examination because of the fear of the discomfort, and um, there are even uh, very terrible numbers about those examinations. Uh, for example, here in Poland, uh, there are programs um, that qualify people, basically every um, every person that meets some criteria like age, like, uh, like um, risk factors, uh, to get a free screening um, by, for example, colonoscopy or gastroscopy. And uh, even if the screening is free uh, and they are sent invitations to those people that are qualified, uh, around 13% of those people respond to those invitations and get uh, the testing done. And that's very sad because uh, at some certain age, we all will uh, have, uh, we all develop some kind of lesions, uh, for example, in our large intestines that have to be uh, inspected and by uh, by some doctors uh, the advantage of traditional endoscopy is that you can also um, not only inspect those lesions but also react um, and uh, for example take a sample or even remove it right on the spot during the examination our capsule didn't uh, have uh, it but in contrast to those traditional for example, colonoscopy, um, it is basically um, discomfort free. I, I would like to say that because you are swallowing just like a big tablet and that's all, that's the whole examination. You have a, a remote receiver with you. You can go to work, do everything you want. There are no limitation with this examination. You, you just basically forget it. I personally swallowed our products uh, and that was very, very pleasant. <laughs> I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything. The capsule maybe look a little big on those um, pictures, but it's the size of a big uh, vitamin capsule. And um, the fact that the capsule is made from plastic makes uh, it very slippery. So uh, if you swallow some vitamins that are very large, they are made uh, basically from, from gelatin, the, the exterior capsule, and it tends to stick to your throat. Uh, with our product, it's like a very slippery polymer. So uh, you have basically to, to watch out to not spit it from your mouth. <laughs> it's so slippery. So that's um, great. So your capsule was tested yes so if you test this you're uh, supposed to go through some test test yes so how many people besides you use your capsule uh yes first uh, that's a medical device of course so we have to do all kind of testing the, the biocompliance the it's also a electromagnetic device, so we have to meet a certain electromagnetic compliance standards, and our device is through fully tested. Uh, we started with some synthetic testing, like with all those medical devices, and um, recently we even finished a test on a small batch of uh, patients in our um, neighbor hospital. Uh, the group was 36 patients to evaluate uh, the um, uh, the usability of the whole of, of our whole system um, and basically the response from the patients and the uh, medical staff was uh, very positive so that's great and in how time we can you think that your device will be uh, we can be used in hospital or in doctor's cabinet. How many times it has to go that your your biocam startup, your devices will be available for everyone? Mm -hmm. Basically, we are aiming uh, at the end of um, 2024 
the year 2024 because we are limited uh, by uh, the whole testing and certification procedures that's something uh, we can't uh, rush of course because the safety concerns uh, and the whole bureaucracy uh, but our capsule uh, in some variants can be obtained uh, earlier earlier sorry uh, but only for animal use. We are uh, going to release our system uh, by the end of 2023. Okay, so that's uh, that's great. And what will be the cost of that solution? Is that will be more uh, expensive than regular endoscopy or it, the prices will be uh, similar? Uh, it will depend of the market in which it okay. will be released and because we want to uh, first focus on our local market here in Poland and uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, then we will try to apply for FDA uh, for North, uh, North America and then uh, we will shift to more localized markets, for example, China, Korea, um, and the price will be kept basically in, in um depending on the region the capsule will be sale, uh, sold uh, but we uh, try to do our best to um, minimize the co uh, minimize the cost of the capsule and the whole system using the system so the price will be compared to a package of gastroscopy and colonoscopy together with uh, some medication and uh, um, work uh, the, the, the wage you have to pay uh, the the people that provided those examinations to the patient. Okay, great. So I think that many people can use this because the price will be the same and the comfort and the whole process of that not pleasant uh, examination will be just better. And uh, going back to um, your device, so after normal endoscopy, sometimes uh, some complication happened. And uh, what about uh, your solution? Is the chance of different com complication is higher or lower than in normal endoscopy? Uh, it's lower. It's lower than normal endoscopy because um, during normal endoscopy, uh, you can um, do uh, pretty much uh, a big harm to the patient. Of course, um, the doctors are very skilled, professional. I, I'm not saying that uh, they are uh, they can't do their job uh, correctly, but accidents sometimes happen. You can make, for example, a perforation in the big uh, the intestines uh, during a colonoscopy. But uh, if you swallow a capsule, uh, the examination is very safe. Uh, for example, uh, I have some uh, a study here um that says uh, that uh, it, it was um, posted in the world journal of gastrointestinal endoscopy uh, and uh, the study was uh, made on uh, yes uh, the study was made on 20 uh, over 22000 cases uh, and during those uh, cases there were no um, uh, no uh, capsule retention or errors or uh, injuries on a group of uh, healthy patients. Uh, so basically what does this mean uh, is that for healthy people that want to do some screening on themselves, the capsule is completely safe. When something happens, it means that you are already in trouble. <laughs> for example, okay. if you have a cancerous lesion in your uh, intestines, the capsule can stuck there, but the lesion is so big that even a not chewed properly piece of food can create obstruction there. So um, there will be a need to intervene, uh, intervene uh, in, that uh, in that situation. So uh, comparing to classical endoscopy method, the capsule is more safe um in 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 those examinations okay and what about people who have some 
uh, contradiction, like they can have normal endoscopy because some of the problem in the body. So what we've got people, if your solution is for them or it uh, also, also you have to cr make some uh, criteria to do, to use your solution. Uh, our capsule endoscopy is basically for everybody. Uh, right now, the, the virus capsule technology uh, is mainly used in, especially for in people that uh, can uh, can't take a normal colonoscopy or gastroenteroscopy uh, because uh, though they are too weak, for example, or their body is too fragile. For example, elderly people have uh, often uh, internal bleeding and they are uh, going through a lot of screening processes to find where the bleeding comes, if it's severe and needs to be stopped. And uh, in that situation, the capsule endoscopy is very handy because um, the patient can just swallow it and lay in bed. And then the uh, particular spot where the bleeding is happening can be found. And then uh, the uh, operation done by the, the, the medical team uh, can be very limited only to that spot. Okay, and how the process of uh, swallowing and use your uh, use your device look like? So how do people who want to take the exam, how they have to prepare to that? Uh, it's uh, the same like for any other endoscopy examination. Uh, you just turned it uh, solid foods a few days prior the examination and the day prior uh, you just don't eat anything and before the examination you swallow some uh, medicine that will rel relax your bowel muscles uh, and empty your stomach. Okay, so there so... are no food particles in the view. Okay, so the preparation are similar, but the effect and the comfort of the examination is so much higher. And that's, I think that's a really great solution because I, as I said before, many people are scared of endoscopy because that's not pleasant. And you can improve the, I can even say, uh, health of the people in that way. And yes, we uh, hope so. That's great. And what are the other advantages of using your product? The other advantages, uh, we uh, we are developing not only the, the software to detect lesions, to use other endoscopic devices with our software, but also we are developing our own hardware platform. And the biggest advantage of our business model uh, in that is we are not limited by the devices as some other manufacturers do. Uh, so we can improve our technology, use some clever examination tricks that are used right now in the traditional colonoscopy, but were not uh, introduced into capsule endoscopy. And we are aiming to be the first that, for example, uh, use uh, narrow bandwidth imaging or imaging in different color spectra to um, illuminate those uh, the lesions in which are we are particularly interested um, in some examinations. Basically, um, that's uh, using like very coloring light, for example, green or, or red in a very narrow spectra, uh, and uh, you improve the contrast of the image. So. Uh, the healthy tissue looks very dull, for example, and some bleeding uh, or um, cancerous lesions can light up in this light. Uh, we can also uh, put new sensors in our capsule, for example, very precise temperature sensors, and we can detect the temperature changes uh, during the passage of the capsule. Uh, so when you have like uh, inflammation, the temperature could rise, in those uh, region, uh, those things are very niche and uh, very, um, uh, very futuristic. But we uh, we think we are capable of implementing that in our product and test them in a real uh, world use and, and put something um, a, a new advantage in in this technology.
Okay, and I saw on your website that you mentioned also about mobile application for mobiles. So can you tell us something more about that solution? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the mobile application is a guidance for patients that uh, are doing remote examinations because um, you have to prepare for the examination. If you are not strict with your diet, and the days prior or you don't take the medicine that will empty your bowel and relax your muscles muscles uh, the examination won't do much because our capsule doesn't have like a car windshield doesn't have wipers <laughs> so uh, if something is in your intestines uh, it will obstruct the view uh, so that's where our um, application comes in hand because we try to do um the application to provide instructions to the patients that are very clear clear and um, are testing the patient knowledge on every point of the examination uh, if the patient uh, knows what he is doing if he done the step correctly uh, and um, if we can proceed further and also the mobile application will offload the data from the capsule on the receiver the receiver and send it through the uh, telemedic, uh, the, the cloud platform uh, to, to further processing it. So that's great because very often when you go for endoscopy, the whole process of preparation is really unclear because doctors say something else, the uh, worker, when you phone them, phone uh, to the doctor to say something more, say, something else the internet says everything else and that's yes. great because you have strict uh strict regulation of what you have to do before you use your uh, device yes and, and uh, also the the doctor can alter the examination and send uh, the altered ve version of instruction to a particular patient and the patient can revive the, uh, review those instruction at every single point if he wants to so he, he doesn't uh, need to call the doctor uh, he doesn't need to uh, look up on the internet for instructions so that's great and what about animals is your solution is also for them or only for people um, we are going to sell our capsule also for animals in a, a limited um, package because you don't need every fancy uh, futuristic um, uh, medical advantage, uh, advantage in animals, uh, but uh, the capsule will be also used in large animals, for example, horses or large dogs. And um, we hope that it will provide a, a good, uh, good uh, value for veterinary doctors, for example, for screening for parasites or gastric problems. In, in those animals. And if the process of creating that capsule is a little bit different for animals and for humans, or is the same product? It will be mostly the same product because, um, it, of course, it will be um, the, the main difference is the certification. The, the um, okay. product for humans needs uh, uh, to meet the certain criteria and uh, be approved to be used on humans. But of course, the product for animals will also be the same, um, made with those same standards, because it's okay. more economically viable for us. Okay. Okay. I see. And you are a co founder of Biocam. So, how you and your other co-founder came up with the idea so what motivates you how did you invite this kind of startup how it all began uh, the first thing uh, i recall was meeting a few friends of um, the, the other uh, maciej wysocki the other co-founder uh, that um, came to us with a um, question if we could provide a device that could monitor people that are free diving. Uh, yes, so that's a, a, a very different um, 
different thing than medical examination. But in that sport, uh, there is a need for monitoring free divers if uh, they are still being focused and, and alive. And we were thinking how we can do some uh, a task like this because free divers don't want uh, to, to wear something. They can be restricted with items that are outside of their body. And we were thinking about the device that can be put inside their body, for example, swallow. Uh, then we were um, speaking with some of our medical mentors uh, at the time. And we discovered that uh, there is a niche in the capsule endoscopy market. Uh, basically, there are only a few monopolistic companies that divided the globe into a few regions and they are creating capsule endoscopy that uh, haven't been upgraded in the previous 10, 20 years and nothing is uh, doing and nothing is done in that um, uh, in, in in that uh, technology, there are no further advancement. Uh, so we we thought that we can do something with it and uh, help uh, more people and have some of that that uh, cake for ourselves. So that's great. And you have something on the beginning, something else, and you turn that to something amazing. And that's really impressive. And I can say congratulations to you uh, because it really can evolve and develop the endoscopy examination and just help uh, improve the life of the people. And I have the question about the quality of photos taken by your device and by the uh, traditional endoscopy, because the traditional endoscopy like is a camera uh, which you have to swallow and they, the doctors see all your body inside and everything. And how will be with your camera because you have to swallow this and the, the, no, this will be a capsule in your body and non like camera on the I don't know how it's say professional and do you understand what I mean? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, the early examination were done by fiberoscopes. So they were like very long tubes with optics inside yes. with lenses uh, that directed light from a light source outside the patient's body uh, through the tube inside um, the, the human body. The light was scattered by the tissue and the image uh, was uh, was uh, uh, take the same path of the, uh, as the light that came in, and the physician could look at the image uh, through a, a lens on the scope. Uh, that had some advantages because the image was in real time, uh, and uh, there were no uh, limiting factors in resolution, I believe, and. Um, frames per second because the image was live through a passive device uh, but the technology had some limitations uh, the, the image was darker because you have many um, optical elements in your path uh, the, uh, there were some for example chromatic aberrations and other uh, distortions um, of, uh, that were introduced by the optics so people came up with the idea to put um, small electronic cameras at the end of those uh, traditional endoscopes. So you could shrink the endoscope in size, in, in diameter. Uh, so it will be more pleasure, <laughs> more, more uh, with, you, the patient could uh, swallow those endoscopes with ease. Um, and uh, the uh, light source and the camera were at the end, so there were like no light losses in, inside those devices. Uh, but doing so um, made the quality of the images with the endoscope and the capsule endoscopy uh, make no difference because the, the capsule itself also uses a light source and a camera i think of like a, the, the only difference i can think of is like um, the frames per second because if you swallow a complete cable down your trough with an endoscope you can provide more power 
uh, to the um, camera and receive more data. So the camera itself can take more pictures at the sec uh, per, per second. But with a capsule, we are limited to the energy density stored in the batteries inside the capsule. And uh, we are limited also by the transmission rate at which we can send those images outside uh, to the receiver. So that's the um, uh, most disadvantage if you compare the capsule endoscopy to a classical fibroscopy because you because you receive uh, fewer and fewer images but of course uh, it's uh, not a bad thing if you um, look at it from a different side that you can examine the whole uh, intestines of the patient and using a fibroscope you can just examine it like a few feet of it okay i see and uh, now I would like to focus something more on your uh, startup than your uh, product. And mm -hmm. uh, what uh, what are your plans for developing startup in next few years? Uh, for the development, like I said, uh, we are trying to take some certification on our products on different market. Uh, we try to expand internationally uh, and we are uh, looking for uh, partners that uh, were will be willing to sell our products and not lock us lock uh, us up on some markets uh, because sometimes uh, there are um, selling uh, companies that are only specialized for few countries uh, but their criteria is that they are uh, they will be uh, the only distributor of our technology, for example, for the whole Europe, but they are only selling the product in, in for example, Germany and Spain. Uh, so we try to avoid uh, some situations like that. Mm, and uh, like I said, we try to uh, improve our product and expand the available technology and, and um, niche applications that can be used um, with, with our device. So that's our main uh, expanding strategy. So instead of uh, doing um, a, a, a different products, we try to improve our product and dominate the market. Okay, is that dominating the market and finding the right people who will be selling your uh, product uh, besides uh, beside Poland? Is that the biggest challenge for you in this time or you have some bigger challenge than this? Um, bigger challenges, I think, I'm in Bicam, I'm more specialized in developing the, the capsule and creating hardware. So I'm speaking from like a hardware person um, point of view. And the biggest challenge is um, right now uh, creating uh, the device and um, creating a, a path and uh, some um, opportunity to constantly create uh, the device in batches and meet all the certification cr criteria for it. Uh, because if you start right now in Europe, if you start to develop and produce a medical device and uh, you apply for some, for example, CE mark, uh, you have uh, to provide a uh, very strict documentation how you produce the device, but not only how you produce the device, but where do you produce it in how uh, big quantities uh, and how the process is going. So you, in future, you can't very easily alter the production process and the whole distribution path, for example. And right now, if we have some unstable geopolitical, uh, some unstable political problems on on the globe, for example, the situation between China and Taiwan or uh, the war on Ukraine, uh, we are meeting with uh, some um, obstacles in which we can source components that are needed for a capsule. And if we want our capsule to be single used that means that every patient needs at least one capsule 
So every examination needs um, some um, some components to 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 be um, to be assembled and shipped to the patient. So that's a very delicate chain of supply that uh, we have to uh, we have to develop and maintain through the whole process of the production certification and uh, supporting our project product. So from so, a hardware person point of view, that's for me, that's the biggest problem. OK, so finger crossed that everything uh, goes well and your capsule will be ready as soon as possible and everything goes nice. And uh, I also saw on your website that you received a big fund from European Union. It was almost 900,000, so it's a lot of money. So how this money help you develop uh, your startup so how they help you uh, basically pay fair wages <laughs> to the workers and that's the that's the main point because developing a product a medical product and hardware medical product that is very specialized in a, and a very niche application and has a very niche application needs uh, some very specialized people so you can imagine that uh, the hiring process is uh, very hard in uh, this uh, in this um, sector of the market. Uh, so every funding helps uh, us uh, with uh, with uh, going forward because we have more people that uh, can um, improve our product and are specialized in different parts of the product uh, because our product it's not like a uh, or like a pair of scissors where you have uh, where you need some um, material scientists some uh, cut engineers and some mechanical engineers our product has all of it uh, we have hardware that's electronics we have radio electronics uh, we need um, optical specialists we need materials uh, specialists for the, the for the dome of the capsule for the uh, enclosure uh, of the capsule uh, we need programmers because the capsule also has firmware. The receiver also has firm firmware. We have a mobile application. We have a cloud application. So there's a lot of tech that we are fusing together with, in this product. So every bit of uh, money helps in that. And uh, without those grants, it would be basically impossible to meet the uh, newest uh, standards and criteria to, for example, obtain a FDA mark or CE mark. It will be basically impossible uh, to to start from the ground up without a very big um, pharmaceutical company and and many uh, money uh, that they have for research and development. So I was wondering how many people work in your company because uh, when we talk about when we talk with CEO or a co-founder of startup, they usually said that the amount of worker in the startup is something around eight, four, five, uh, max to ten. And how in is your case? How many people work on your startup? Uh, we employ more than 10 people, uh, a lot of uh, a lot more, um, but <laughs> I have to uh, to say that I'm not sure how many people are working here right now because, uh, like I said, I'm only focused on the hardware and software part of uh, the product. Um, but the hardware team is uh, very big. For example, the the we have uh, 10 plus people working on electronics and 10 plus people working on AI development, the, the whole um, cloud platform that will automatically detect the lesions because that's the, the capsule is not uh, the hardest part in the product. Also, those uh, algorithms that will automatically detect those images that are worth looking or, uh, at are also a scientific marvel itself. So we are employing a lot of specialists uh, in, in our startup. OK, I see. I understand. So you can say that your startup is something else than usual and the medical startup are need more people because they are more advanced and we 
talk about uh, things that help people and they can cure them. So I have one last question to you. Uh, we asked everyone for that question. So can you tell us the advice for people who are listening to us and who want to start their own business? What is your advice for them? Um, the advice, be more realistic. Um, I was uh, very optimistic on the start of the project and I didn't realize that creating a device uh, like this uh, was uh, so complicated uh, that it uh, is a very big initiative and uh, if I could go back in time and try to do things the other way around uh, I will be uh, more uh, I will be trying to be more uh, more in other people's shoes for example because I was looking at this um, this problem the creating of the device like an electronic and uh, IT engineer uh, and uh, I was um, measuring everything by my experience uh, uh, not proudly of it workaholic <laughs> so uh, I was uh, very surprised that other people have for example other um, look on their life and some like work life balance and <laughs> don't they don't want to work uh, 24 hours um, a day uh, but yeah if i could start from the ground up i will be be more realistic and uh, plan everything uh, more precise and uh, make more or like um um more buffering decision to to uh, obtain more money and more people uh, for for our project okay so thank you for advice thank you for being here and uh, for the extremely interesting conversation uh ceo co-founder of biocam jakub niemczuk Thank you very much for being here. Is there anything you would like to add at the end of our conversation? Uh, I would like uh, to add that I'm very um, happy that you invited me for this podcast and I'm glad I could speak with you and uh, share something about the product because we are uh, really thinking, not, not only me, but every person in our team is thinking that we are making something good for the people and it's not some like greedy corporation medical product that we try to reap of people of money, uh, but we uh, really think that we can make a difference in the diagnostic path of, of uh, people. Yes, I think I think so. So finger crossed that your startup will develop that your device will be fine and everything goes well. Fingers crossed and thank you for being here. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye.